most people are going get into the high value uh, orthodox teas. And the, 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 the orthodox tea is just the system of crushing the yeah, or whatever time we want to use it. So why do you want us to permanently keep us on this own style when we should be moving this? What is it that you people are doing to ensure that our factories are able to adopt this new technology? We are also working with uh, some companies from the Timex or the Bid that are our, they, they are our local agents to supply the local plants as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so most of our factories in the ATC have adopted the components plants, and uh, some of them are also coming in. So we are working with a customer in India that provides the plants. I will specifically be able to give what we are doing as the government of Kenya because we want really to run away from this dependence on uh, imports 
and to ensure that our country is food and nutritional secure. We have an, an elaborate plan, and that is why you find under the, uh, the bottom hub transformation uh, agenda, uh, the agriculture is, agriculture is a key pillar towards achieving this end. And uh, uh, the government of President William Ruto is so committed in ensuring that there is finance to agriculture. There is finance to our farmers. And to ensure that we are able to achieve this, I think uh, you realize for the last one year, we've been able, the government has been so clear in its mind to support the production against uh, consumption. Our e-voucher uh, system on fertilizer is a, is a success story because we are telling people, please get back to your farms. It's the only way to make this country have enough food for ourselves. And we can only do it if we deliberately ensure that we all go back to our farms. And the only government is now doing is to ensure that there is that subsidy in the agricultural sector, not only on fertilizer. We are moving to the other step of ensuring that there is also financing on other inputs. So thereafter then, and just as His Excellency has said, and the question has been raised on financing, this government has deliberately decided to increase funding in agriculture and to achieve the Malabon Declaration on financing of agriculture to around 10% of each country's budget. You realize through AFC, Government has committed to put in 10 billion shillings. This 10 billion shillings is to ensure that the Agricultural Finance Corporation is liquid enough for farmers, whether you are growing maize, whether you are growing coffee, or whether you are keeping livestock for easy access of credit. And our idea is to push the interest rate on these uh, loans to farmers to below one range to ensure there is enough money to support our farmers. Secondly, some of the programs that we are running as a ministry in collaboration with development partners, like for example, the Drive Project. It's a project whereby we have around 40 million US dollars. The whole idea is to bring farmers together and especially in their south areas to be able to come up with the feed lots, be able to finance young men and women to grow fonda to, to feed our animals. And the whole idea is to ensure that there is sustained finance to our farmers so that at least uh, they, they are able to produce enough for our own consumption, enough for our own for export. And again, so that there is that, you know, for any business, we always say that the any business to be is as good as the revenue that you create out of it. So the business of value addition and agro-processing in, in this uh, Kwenya Kwanza plants and gender is to ensure that our farmers have get the best out of what they do. And I think that is one of the ways to ensure that we maintain our farmers in, the, in their pieces of land. And for your information, out of this fertilizer subsidy program, out of the land commercialization program that we are running, Already we have been able to put in 200,000 hectares into food production for this, for last season and now. And when you look at our prospects in terms of how much we are producing our maize, our expected uh, harvest on maize, we are going to eat 61, 000, uh, 61 million bags. And in, in, by, the, by the year 2025, this country will not be dependent on any imports, especially on the maize and others. And remember, uh, this, is, this is so undeliberate, it is being done consistently because there is nothing else that we can do other than try to bring the cost of living down and bringing the cost of living down is trying to address the country's food and nutritional requirements by making sure that we deliberately produce what is enough for us. African, the whole thing today revolves around agricultural technology and how we build agricultural through innovation. A time has come when we must accept the reality of life. And uh, the realities of life are that the world right now 
is really grappling with the serious effects of climate change. You know how climate change affects agriculture. The only way to deal with a growing population, the only way to deal with land mass or with, that, with our own land size that is permanently not, which is not expanding, whose soils are getting sick every day, and with very many mouths that we must feed day in, day out, is to realize that for us to be able to feed our people, for the world to be food sufficient, we must adopt and we must be ready to invest in technology. The space in technology, in all spheres or aspects of life, is the way to go. We must, and I think it has been seen, see how we can reduce post-harvest losses by adopting technology to, more, to manage our post-harvest losses. We must adopt the technology so that we can increase our yields. We must be able to accept and use science to be able to develop drought resistance crops to deal the effects of climate change. So this area is not something we can run away from, and I'm so happy that the ADTF has really been able to bring us here very great uh, minds from all over Africa and uh, other parts of the world to really participate in this very important forum. So I'm happy, I'm lucky to be the host of this very important conference uh, here in Kenya. And I hope you people are really enjoying uh, uh, the good uh, weather of Nairobi. I'm so happy that you people are blessing to us. You've brought the blessings. Rain has come with you. And because for quite some time, and what we are trying to work on as a government and as a people here, is how to run away from relying on rain fed agriculture and see what we can do to harvest this water that, we, that when it's raining right now, so that we can be able to store it, so that we can be able to use it during those times when we have raw rain and use it to grow uh, food for our people. Because food and nutritional security is our key mandate as a Ministry of Agriculture, and which uh, uh, the government and my colleague P.S. Rono and uh, Mweke and others are really working towards achieving. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a great opportunity for us to discuss, engage, share knowledge, knowledge on how we can be able to deal with this great problem that we face as humanity, that we have to use technology and innovation to deal with those problems that we face. So before I